Have you ever wanted to endlessly have abilities spawning out of the noggin for the most simplest actions? Have you ever wanted to feel like God and be able to take on the most nastiest endgame critters you face? Then I have an amazing build just for you. You see, I've been thinking of different ways players can go into endgame without the use of certain and common exotics that you see. Take Ursus, a powerful endgame exotic that can trivialize content and prevent your team from dying so often. I wanted to create something similar to that by offering the user more uptime with their abilities. And when I mean more uptime, I mean a lot more. In comes this spanking new solo build designed for groups and solo players for endgame. Utilizing the Traveler's Chosen with his Catalyst and the Heart of Inmost Light, we can create a new solar endgame build that can cover many roles in one and adapt to different changes no matter the subclass being used. The build will allow you to stay above the curve with the new changes and it's great for those that want to change up endgame builds every so often. It sounds interesting right? Great, as you can go ahead and attach this to your other collection of hottest mixtapes around. So before we head in, if you enjoyed the video then do leave a like and a sub as it does go a long way for me. Starting off the subclass, we will be using Code the Siegebreaker for the full use of Soul Invictus, some Warrior and a Super, which will all help the build spread its effects. The build is a melting pot of ability regeneration once you get the specific perks going and from here you can use this to create streaks of regeneration and debuffs to those who get in your way. The Sunspots via Soul Invictus and Sun Warrior are more designed for staying in one spot once active and from here we can use the enhancements to inflict more damage and garner more ability energy as we go. This alone is going to be handy if we use our melee or grenades to achieve this as both abilities will see a lot of usage thanks to the Withering Heat mod. This mod will provide a 30% debuff onto champions once applied so whatever abilities we use we can apply this buff indefinitely. Of course, Soul Invictus alone isn't enough to pull all of this support in, which is why we have Traveler's Chosen and Heart of Inmost Light to further keep this area afloat. Heart of Inmost Light will allow me to quickly regen an ability that is the lowest of the three, while Traveler's Chosen is going to allow me to quickly regen abilities as well once it starts to stack. With the two combined, you technically shouldn't run out of ability energy ever, and this is where the fun begins. Combining everything into one will trigger our elemental wells and with the Wither Heat mod, which will allow us to collect more energy as we go while keeping champions weakened as long as our effects go on and on. Once in action, things can get very crazy fast, but this can allow us to clear our areas or place barricades or even get our super up very quickly. The things you can do with this build is endless, but appealing for those who want a quick way to access your abilities without the hassle. Within the weapons now, I've tried to keep it within the realm of taking on champions I face, but also being able to trivialize my weapon's perks with the mods being used. An example of this is the Traveler's Chosen Sidearm that pairs wonderfully well with our Heart of Inmost Light exotic. The weapon allows us to gain a huge amount of ability energy back depending on the stacks we are on, which is nice for build design of our ability spam. However, as of recently, the weapon received a catalyst that provides the weapon osmosis and full auto trigger. Two perks that fit the weapon and the whole build design. As I have the elemental armor's mod attached, I can use the osmosis perk to change my weapon's elemental type and thus create wells via the mod as well. And this is going to be handy for a number of scenarios, but mainly the ability to use all my abilities whenever I like and the ability to utilize the mods such as protective light and elemental charge all in one. For a secondary, I'm using the Tyranny of Heaven bow with Sneak Bow and Dragonfly and this is a great pairing for the build because of how powerful bows are in endgame content and how we can make so much use with Dragonfly attached. Although the explosion isn't the strongest, the Dragonfly perk can cause a wide number of wipes if it manages to finish off a minor combatant. This can be very useful for killing out rooms on minor and major combatants if things become too much. But at the same time, if we have the Elemental Armaments mod or the Explosive Wellmaker mod attached, we can utilize them to quickly create wells there and then. Considering how powerful this is going to be at mid to long ranges while our sidearm covers the rest, this is the best pairing you want to use for this build and any content you have in mind. Alternatively, Death Adder SMG is another good choice to pick as it can roll with Dragonfly and it fits the close range nature of the build. Or Stars and Shadow is another good choice as it can roll the same perk and can be used in endgame content against the unstoppable champions. For Heavy, we have Reach Regret with Quick Draw and Roar Ball, which is going to be great when you're up against champions and bosses alike and will make short work of them. We don't have the Power Code Deconstruction mod this time round as we have opted into using the Withering Heat mod instead for extra damage applied, but either way, the weapon will still greatly do a substantial amount of damage as long as we land a critical hit. 
now for the stats, I have a lot of focus within the discipline side of the build, simply being this is the main area that will be used the most for the entirety of the build, and is the most easier part of the build around. Considering that we do have the heart in most light and childish children attached, a number of our stats don't need to be gone overboard as the flow of energy will be substantially high. So in my example, I've aimed for an 80 in discipline, so we can garner grenades energy faster to produce wells, sunspots, and activate Heart of Inmost Light and Traveler's Chosen Catalyst at all times. These are the four Holy Trinity for the build, and this is where the key mods will branch out and activate one after another. Take Elemental Ordnance, as this mod relies on grenade usage, its uptime for creating wells will be an all-time high, which also means Battleful Well will see a huge usage and protective light will also be used thoroughly. As long as we keep this area stacked, we will always have worlds and abilities flowing, and this can help in tough content where you need to clear a path with your grenades or place a barricade down to protect you, etc. The option to freely have certain abilities back can give the players more chances of fighting back instead of holding off from his fights. To play it safe, we have our resilience at 80 as well, so we have two options available that Heart of Inmost Light can rely on if one else fails. Which then leads to intellect at 50. No big need to fully invest in the area as one Ashes Assets mod is all that you need to survive. Plenty of grenades means plenty of energy being provided, which means plenty of supers being used non stop. Applying Riven Heat to the mix, you can burn down GM lower champions within a few hits, and this can be useful if coordinated well with your team. Alternatively, attaching the Weller Potency mod can vastly help with this build if you want to use your super more often as the number of worlds being produced means you'll never slow down in terms of super energy being returned. But this is only recommended if you want to use this in lower tier content and not really ideal for Grandmaster or Master content to a degree. We are now left with a few mods I've been left found, and those are Elemental Armaments which allow solar based weapons to create wells, and this will see a huge usage via the Traveler's Chosen one active. We then have the Recuperation mod which will regen our health the moment we pick up an orb of power, we then have Wither Heat which will grant us a 30% debuff for champions for a few seconds when applied. And then lastly we have the Utility Kickstart mod for a moderate boost in class energy upon its use. Now as we have covered the main topics of the setup we are using, here are the mods we have and how they will overall affect the build. For Head we have Discipline, Ashes to Assets and Bountiful World mod. Arm we have Recovery and Elemental Ordnance mod. Chest we have Discipline, because of Damage Times 2 and Protective Light mod. Leg with Minor Intellect, a Fusion Mario Scavenger, Recuperation, and Element Armors mod. A Mark, we have Minor Discipline, Utility Kickstart, Within Heat, and Element of Charge mod. Just like many builds we do on this channel, I want to see what other endgame builds we could possibly do to expand the common list of builds we know of. Although I see the appeal of wanting to use Radiance Warlocks or Ursa Titans for most content, the majority of the time this isn't always the case and you can get away with it as long as you have a build in mind that covers the main difficulty you'll be facing. Now I choose to focus on the endgame solar build that can constantly regenerate abilities one after another and keep combatants away from me without the need of using weapons to take them out, and this has been useful to a degree. A single firewall grenade can take out a large group of minor and major combatants in one go and create a ton of super energy and worlds as return. Because of how both our exotics work, we can keep this specific section of the build fully filled and endlessly create their desired goals. With the Wither and Heat mod, this will allow us to not only take our champions faster, but can be done in a way that our grenades or melees alone, really these sunspots created, can do a vast majority of damage for us, to which we can then come in and finish up easily. And this is what I feel is important for endgame encounters, as 9 times out of 10, you'll be facing a room full of combatants and multiple champions at once, and sometimes you won't have the time to take them all out in a coordinated manner. Considering that this option is now available, we can solo a champion of any type without the need of hassle at times. Interestingly, with the build, we can expand on these areas even more and focus on anti-champions with even more benefits if we wished. Thermoplastic Strike can allow us to stun early champions via melee, and although that is a very tricky method of stopping them, the swapping to military solar for a thrown hammer can fill this void in very well. Or the popular Fire and Ice mod can see a lot of usage here since it's going to be giving you both solar and stasis wells upon a defeated champions. Like many things, the build offers users a simple setup that does what it needs to do, but also grants a high usage of abilities that no one can complain about. And trying this out in Master to Grandmaster 
Exodus Crash with swords showed me that we can easily cut off all combatants with ease, with grenades and barricades, and focus all efforts on the boss flawlessly, although I think I got a bit lucky this time round. Using the build in a more chaotic environment, like Battlegrounds for example, offered me one of the most funnest solo based builds to play with if you ever want to live a fast life in Destiny. So if you ever want to give solo endgame builds a try, I would recommend this one as you have room to expand and explore if you don't like what's being given. Come on down and give it a try guys, I'm sure you like it. So if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like and a sub and also follow me on Twitter to keep up date with Destiny content if you do that type of stuff, link is down below. But once again, thanks for stopping by and I'll see you on the next one.